There have always been fighters who have been dominant in their respective weight classes who have just looked unstoppable. But once they suffered a devastating loss, they have never seemed like the same fighter they once were. So here is five fighters who were never the same after losing. Number 5 Anthony Pettis won the UFC lightweight title after defeating Benson Henderson by an armbar in the first round at UFC 164. He next went on to defeat Gilbert Melendez by a guillotine choke at UFC 181. Anthony Pettis had looked so dominant in his UFC run that many had thought they would remain the champion for a very long time. His second title defense was said to be against Rafael dos Anjos at UFC 185. In the fight, Rafael dos Anjos completely dominated the whole fight from start to finish, absolutely outclassing Anthony Pettis in all areas of the fight. After the five rounds, the unanimous decision was given to Rafael dos Anjos who became the new UFC lightweight champion. Anthony Pettis next lost to Eddie Alvarez and Edson Barboza which led him to drop down to the featherweight division where he pulled off a submission victory over Charles Oliveira. He next fought Max Holloway for the interim UFC featherweight title at UFC 206 where he lost the fight by TKO in the third round. Since losing to Rafael dos Anjos, he hasn't looked like the same fighter he once was. It seems as though that the loss affected his confidence as he has always seemed hesitant inside the octagon. He has mentioned that he will be moving back up to the lightweight division where he needs to put some solid wins over the top 10 lightweights to enter the title picture once again. Number 4 George St. Pierre first won his UFC welterweight title after defeating Matt Hughes by TK in the second round at UFC 75. He was next scheduled to defend his title against the number one contender at that time, Matt Serra. Matt Serra earned himself a title shot after winning the ultimate fight of the comeback. Nobody thought that Matt Serra had a chance against GSP. In the fight, Matt Serra knocked out George St. Pierre in the first round to become the new UFC welterweight champion of the world. GSP next defeated Josh Koscheck and Matt Hughes and faced Matt Serra again at UFC 83 where he won the fight by TK in the second round to win back his UFC welterweight title. He next went on to defend his title 9 times against the top competition at that time. Although he had a very successful run and did go on to become one of the most dominant champions in UFC history, the loss to Matt Serra definitely hurt his confidence and it definitely altered his fighting style. As before, he was very confident in standing with fighters on the feet where he had finished fighters with his striking. Since the loss, he has changed his fighting style drastically where he mixes his striking with his takedowns which gave him great success over the years. Number 3 Chuck Liddell won the UFC La Heavyweight title after defeating Randy Couture by knockout in the third round at UFC 52. He next defended his title four times, finishing all of his opponents in a devastating fashion. Chuck Liddell was one of the most feared knockout artists in the UFC where he was knocking everyone out. His fifth title defense was scheduled to be against number one contender at that time, Quinton Rampage Jackson. Rampage Jackson had just knocked out Marvin Eastman at UFC 67 to earn his title shot. Both Chuck Liddell and Quinton Jackson faced off at UFC 71 where Rampage Jackson viciously knocked out Chuck Liddell in the first round to become the new UFC La Heavyweight champion of the world. Chuck Liddell next lost a split decision to Keith Jardine and won a unanimous decision over Wanderlei Silva. After this victory, he would next lose to Rashad Evans, Mauricio Hua and Rich Franklin all by knockout. Since losing to Rampage Jackson, he didn't look like the same knockout artist he once was. It seems as though that loss affected his confidence as he became a very cautious fighter inside the octagon. Also another factor was that he was getting old which may have been the main reason of him getting finished so easily. Number 2 Henan Barrow won the UFC Bantamweight title after defeating Eddie Wineland by TKO in the second round at UFC 165. He next successfully defended his title against Uriah Faber, defeating him by TKO in the first round at UFC 169. Many had considered him to be the best pound for pound fighter on the planet due to him running through fighters with ease. He would always take risks in his fights where he pulled off crazy finishes over his opponents. His second title defense was set to be against late replacement TJ Dillashaw at UFC 173. TJ Dillashaw had just defeated Mike Easton by a unanimous decision at UFC Final 35. Nobody thought that TJ Dillashaw had a chance against Henan Barrow as he had looked so dominant as the champion. In the fight, TJ Dillashaw landed a huge overhand right in the earlier rounds which led him to take control of the whole fight. In the fifth round, he landed a head kick which immediately dropped Henan Barrow to the canvas and followed up with some punches to win the fight by TKO to become the new UFC bantamweight champion of the world. Henan Barrow next faced Mitch Gagnon at UFC Final 58 where in the fight, you could clearly see his confidence was not there as he was very cautious in both of the striking and grappling exchanges but he did go on to win the fight by an arm triangle choke in the third round. He next faced TJ Dillashaw in a rematch at UFC on Fox 16 where in the fight he was completely dismantled from round to round and was eventually finished by TKO in the fourth round. He would next make the move up to the featherweight division where he lost a unanimous decision to Jeremy Stevens at UFC Final 88 and next defeated Philip Nova by a unanimous decision at UFC Final 95. Number 1 from 2010 to 2012, Jake Ellenberger had put together a six-fight winning streak including a 53-second knockout of Jake Shields and a unanimous decision victory over Diego Sanchez. He was next scheduled to face top welterweight Martin Kampman at the Ultimate Fighter 15 finale. In the fight, Jake Ellenberger came very close to finishing Martin Kampman but was finished himself by TKO in the second round. He would next defeat Jay Heron and Nate Marquardt impressively. From this point onwards, things started to go downhill for Jake Ellenberger. He would next lose seven fights and only pulled off two victories. I believe this is 
due to two things. First thing was the loss to Martin Kampman. This loss definitely had a massive impact on his confidence where his ability to pull the trigger was not there anymore. The second thing was that he changed his training camp where he started training with Edmund Taverdian which definitely played a massive factor in his overall game as his aggressive fighting style was no more and always seemed very hesitant inside the octagon. He is 1-4 in his last 5 fights and hopefully he evaluates his overall game and makes a successful comeback.